welcome dadas all over Kenya and in East Africa, wherever you're watching us. We are so glad to have you on, that, on the dadas show. Uh, we want to pray and believe that you're keeping well during COVID-19, during what we are calling the Rona times. And um, we hope you are washing your hands, you are staying at home. For those of you who can stay at home, for those of you who have to leave and go outside, we hope that you are wearing your mask, you're washing your hands, you're keeping your family safe. Uh, today we want to talk about women, business, and Corona-19 or, or, or COVID-19. What, 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 what is that looking like? How are women coping? How are the dadas coping? And especially those of, those of us who are running businesses. So I've invited an old friend to the show, Mishi. Uh, Mishi has been here before. Mishi, tell us a bit about yourself. Thank you, Pauline, for having me. And I appreciate this show. And uh, I'm glad to be back again. Karibu. Asante. Now, uh, my name is Miriam Nabakwe. People call me Mishi. That's a pet name yes. that actually started when I was a young girl. I, the people started calling me Mishi when I was a young girl, and it's just stuck. But my name's are Miriam Nabakwe. And um, I'm the CEO and founder of Kenyeji's Foods. Kenyeji's is a, a company, a limited company, that uh, deals with the pre-cooked food. That is traditional food. I call it forgotten foods. The foods that our grandparents and grandfathers, you, I mean grandparents used to eat. So that is a kind of concept that I set up like to bring it now here in the city so that we can go back to the old ways of eating. And uh, if you notice, most of our grandparents lived for very many years. Mm -hmm. And so I came with this thought, why not uh, embrace what they used to eat? Mm -hmm. Like revive that now in these current times and so that's how Kenya Jesus was birthed okay. yes so the last time you were here which is just about this time last year yes uh, Kenya Jesus was uh, just beginning I think you were just beginning to test the concept that's right how has 2019 treated you pre, mm. pre anything before COVID we are, you know now we are talking about before COVID and after COVID yes BC and AC mm -hmm. so before COVID how was how was life I mean 2019 before covid life was uh, i think it was a little much easier to do business mm. and uh, first of all i want to break it down in terms of uh, access to commodities it was easier to get stuff from the countryside because most of my food comes from the village and uh, so it was much easier in terms of transport like you're always very sure like yeah you get a call from the village we've put your vegetables in a bus this specific bus so you'll get uh, your vegetables in the morning mm -hmm. so you're guaranteed you're going to get your produce in good time and uh, at a cost effective price mm -hmm. and um, secondly um, before COVID it was much easier to move around like of course. look for stuff mm -hmm. here and there mm -hmm. but now it's quite limiting before COVID, it was much easier to get uh, uh, casual laborers mm -hmm. to come and work. And uh, so it, it, this, the operation was always very smooth, smooth running, in my opinion. And to add on that, I was spending less time, like I was more of uh, managing. I was more of managing and I was in touch of, with my business. But right now, it's very different because now I have to step in and do a lot of the things. So after COVID, you, you actually are the one making the food. Yes, I am. Because I most see you on, on Facebook. You are <laughs> cooking the food. Most of the time, <laughs> I am. Why are you the one cooking the food? Are you afraid that uh, people might interact with the food and you don't know where they've been? Or why are you the one cooking the food? You see now with the social distancing and I work from home, and I'm a mother, I have children, you, you have to also start limiting the number of people who come into your mm. house because we have to be careful and follow the, the government set regulations. So I cannot start operating like the way I was operating before. I have to limit my staff because uh, I want to minimize the, um, yeah. my kids being exposed to so many people around. Like before I could have even 10 staff on duty. But now I'm forced to have like five only. Okay. And uh, when they come, social distancing, sanitizing, like don't move into specific And also areas. because you're in Nairobi, they have to leave early. <laughs> exactly, because of the curfew. Because of the, there's a curfew. Yeah, because so of the curfew. So they cannot stay late if, like, like before, if they were late, maybe you would say, stay late, you, I'll get you an Uber to go home. Now that is not even possible it anymore. It can't work because even before I used to have night shifts. Ah. Right now I can't because how will they go home? 
So that night shift, actually, I'm the one who stepped in and doing that night work. So it's you and your children, and perhaps. me and my my grown children, and your grown children, kids. Yes. you are the ones now doing the night shift. Yes. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so before COVID and after COVID is very different. It's yeah? very very different because before COVID, you know, it was also very easy for me to plan my time, plan what I want to do, and whenever I want to do it, and make sure I'm done by a specific time. Yeah and uh, rest well but now i'm not resting well i mean i'm finding myself having to go extra because when you're dealing with food food is very sensitive it has to be kept fresh so you cannot take chances you just have to be there to yeah. make sure things are done right is this how are your customers responding before covid and after covid have they changed i've got regular customers who've still who, who still support me faithfully, 100%. Okay. But the most interesting thing is that when COVID came, I got more attention. Wow. Good for you. Yes. Why do you think that thing? is? I think it's because now most people don't have to go to the market to get their produce. Yeah. So they would prefer now to go the other option now mm. to get to Kenyajis for their foods. Could it also be that they are at home and they're eating a lot? I know, for example, me working from home, that's there's awesome. a lot of eating that that's goes on in a, on a daily basis. And I have a lot more time to see things. We can't rule out that. Yeah. And to add on that also, uh, if you notice right now during COVID, a lot of people are online. Yes. Like when before COVID, my page had only 5,000 mm. followers. Right now I have 6,900. I mean, where did they come from? The 1,900. Of course you now. Had, you had, okay, just repeat that. You know, you've said it so <laughs> casually. Until you had how many followers? 5,000 followers. 5,000 followers. Yes. Wow. Right now I have 6,900 followers. And I have also noticed on my page there are lots of engagements. People are commenting. Others are tagging each other. Like, come and see this. Come and see that. You get it. Okay. So uh, it, it worked to my advantage in a way. And I was very excited. I'll be very honest with you. When COVID came, uh, I was a bit excited because of that attention and mm. people are getting to know me. And I remember the first week we worked so hard. There were so many orders. And then all of a sudden, the prices of commodities like went yeah. up, like doubled. Yeah. Prices of our supplies doubled. So it became a bit difficult now to readjust yeah. because uh, you're not getting stuff the way you used to. You have to now change your costs and everything. But the only thing I say to myself, I'm not going to increase my prices. I'll keep them steady because uh, I'm hopeful that we will, at some point, we will get back to our normal lives. Okay. And so I wouldn't want to keep fluctuating the prices mm -hmm. here and there. So the little I'm making, I'll appreciate. So, you are, so basically what has happened is you have a lot more work, yes. a lot more orders, yes. but you, uh, then you're spending so much more, exactly. which means you are cutting into your profit really. Exactly. At the end of the day, you're not really making as much as you, no. you'd be wanting no. to make for no. all the work that you're putting mm -hmm. in, if uh, that's you think right. about it like that. Mm, that's but right. if things were to adjust, mm -hmm. it would mean then that you really take off. That's the thing. I'm hopeful about that. And uh, so what I've decided to do is uh, most of the time what I'm doing is just to become a little bit more creative. Yeah. Become a little bit more creative, introduce some interesting stuff that would appeal to people, mm. that would make now you move your cells because my cells are mostly moved on vegetables. They're good. Vegetable cells are good. So I have to add in other items which now will make someone look forward to, let's say, let me buy a pack of this protein item. Then I can have a vegetable with it. You get it. Something that will complement yeah. the vegetables. I, I really, that really I think you should tell people some of the things. You know, I know them. But <laughs> could you share with the, with, <laughs> with the ladies some of the things that you do? Because, I mean, they are, they are totally, they are very creative. It's really creative stuff. Thank so you. some of the proteins that you are, you're complementing are, are, are what, for example? Um, like I introduced the smoked cured beef, mm -hmm. which is has become a fast mover. Okay, I would just say it in the in the need the ones the ones you post the language the in, language. In, in <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, we explain to the people okay. in Kiluya. Okay, the la the smoked cured beef we call it in Kiluya eshiango. Eshiango. Mm -hmm. But it's uh, more similar to what Luos call athola, uh -huh. but it's not made the same way. It's a okay. bit different okay. because the athola is just roasted. It's you just smoke the beef. That's it. But mm -hmm. the cured one, you have got to cure it with what we call munyu mushereha, which is uh, a traditional marinade that we add to tenderized foods. 
Is it like a salt with ash? Or? It is uh, actually, it is a very interesting thing. It, it's got a mix of uh, banana, be no, banana peels, okay. dried banana peels, okay. dried bean pods, and dried uh, maize cobs. Ah. And then they are burnt together. When mm -hmm. you get that ash, you filter it to get that filtrate. That filtrate is what is used for that. Oh, wow. Now, we can say it is like uh, bicarbonate of soda, yeah. but you see bicarbonate is processed. Yes. And we get it from what we call magadi. Is yeah. it magadi? It's yeah. the same thing. Salt, like Salt yeah. yeah. So that is a bit different, mm. but, but this is but so this is original. Rich in, it's yes. really rich in nutrients. Yes. If you think about it, beans, mm -hmm. maize. Banana. Yes, that's really rich in yes, in, it in, is in minerals and proteins and yes, all, it is. all kinds of really. And good it is stuff. a very healthy. It, it it also acts as a salt. Oh, okay. It's also healthy to the body. It yeah. lowers cholesterol. Yeah. It uh, takes care of constipation. Anything to do with constipation, acidity, hyperacidity. It also takes care of that. So when it's put into food, you can imagine those benefits now yeah. in terms on of meat, your digestion, or even on meat. Yeah, like it can be used for dried meats. Uh, even fresh meats, chicken, and um, some of the vegetables, actually, I use that mm. to tenderize them. And it also just gives the flavor, a very interesting, unique flavor to the vegetables. And uh, also, uh, did I mention chicken? Yes. Yeah, th yeah. So there's chicken, yes. there's, I know there's beef as yes, well. Yes, there's beef. Uh, I, I do smoked chicken that uh, um, everyone always wonders how I do that chicken. It is just special. I smoke it and then I also just smoke it with that mshereha, the tenderizer. It just comes, brings out a very unique taste. And by the time the customer is buying it, it's, it's already like cooked. You mm. can eat it the way it is. Mm. You can imagine like how we go to the, what are they called? The fast food outlets. Mm. Then we buy that chicken that goes round mm. in a rotisserie. Mm. Now this one done so traditionally and it's original chicken because my chicken also comes from the village. Okay. Yes. So, and I know there's, a, why are you forgetting about the legs of the cow? Oh, the cow feet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the My cow feet, <laughs> I, interestingly, most people uh, who eat cow feet, like if you go to the ghetto, the, mm. you know, the slums area, yes, slum they areas, cow feet and also those chicken kind feet. of things, yes, yes, and chicken feet. Yes. But ma majority of us don't really understand the benefits of that because it, it's loaded with collagens and amino acid, amino, aminos, the healthy aminos for your body. If you have issues with your your joints, mm. you've got issues with even the skin because mm. collagen works on the skin. Yeah, actually, absolutely. Yeah, collagen works yeah. on the skin. Yeah. So people who have arthritis, you know, those so kind of. So that's good for them. That's good the for feet. them. Yes. I don't know if you've noticed West Africans if it eat even cow skin. They do. And have you mm -hmm. seen how tall and and, yes, and, they and grew, very they, energetic they, and uh, they whatever grace, they grow old with very straight back. There's another day I posted a picture because we are so used to eating cow feet like just boiled, yeah, like that, and then you put salt and yeah. eat like that. So there's a time I decided to be a bit more creative and I fried it nicely with tomatoes and onions, and then I put a picture on one of the food groups. Yeah, people are like, "Why are you?" Why are you messing up our cow feet? And mm. I'm like, listen, you can also just have it as a stew mm. with your ugali nicely done like this. It's it's a bit more enhanced and tastier, in my opinion. You know, every time I I, I talk to you, I look at your page, I start feeling hungry. <laughs> so there's <laughs> so have you found that during COVID, you've mm -hmm. had okay besides being creative, mm -hmm. you've had to be fluid. You have to. You've had to kind of think on your feet. Yes. Because it's like things keep shifting. Exactly. So one day the borders are closed, so you mm -hmm. have to think very quickly. Yeah. Have you, as a business person, how has that affected you? Uh, it has uh, really, the, the, like the limit, you're limited. You, you find yourself like limited. You, you cannot go beyond such certain parameters. And so you have to stick with what works and yeah. what the government has set in place. Yeah. You get it. So um, I, I'm just trying to, to be very honest. My I've got my ear on the ground. Yes. Like very alert yes. all the time, like to just find out what ways can, how can I thrive? You know, we just have to thrive one way or another. We, we cannot allow this thing to put us down. We have to find ways in which we can thrive through it. And uh, so I, I keep finding myself, like asking myself, so what next? I know. And I think what for me is, uh, is really, really interesting is, you know, we used to say 
this is not business as usual. Mm -hmm. Do you remember we used to it's say true. that very true. casually? Mm -hmm. This is not going to be business as usual. Mm -hmm. Everything is going to change. Yeah. But I don't think we really knew what that meant. Do you think that Corona, COVID has taught us that what it means, business as usual, and what it means to be awake and alert to the changing, very shifting times? Because I think we used to say that very casually, mm -hmm. not really thinking about mm -hmm. what it really mm -hmm. means mm -hmm. to work in a fluid environment that's mm -hmm. always mm -hmm. changing. Mm -hmm. what, what, what would be your take on that? I, I think uh, I've been telling my kids one thing. You know what? They always say there's going to be the end of the world, and we start imagining and... We, we, we look at it so casually, like, w what are these people telling us? Actually, the world can end. True. You can imagine with this COVID thing, uh, like, it doesn't respect anyone. It catches anyone, mm. you know? It doesn't matter whether you're rich, whether you're poor. So we are all the same before the eyes of God. That's mm. how I look at it. Mm. And uh, in my opinion, we never knew we would get to this point. Like, I was sharing with my daughter last night, and I was telling her, you know what, when the new year began, we all went for Kesha. We were so excited, and the bishop preached, give me this mountain. And we were all like, give me mm. this mountain. God has actually given us a mountain mm. that, that we have to really bow down and really seek him and tell him, hey, you are, you are, you are sovereign. You know mm. what? We want to obey you. We want to follow you, you know? please please we need you you know mm. and um so looking at this whole scenario in the business world i've seen people who even own salons now are selling food there's uh, i don't know if you've seen that post that was going around <laughs> people now respect mama mboga do you know that mama mboga who brings tomatoes people are selling tomatoes in their car boots, going to get fresh produce to sell because now it looks like a viable business yes it's a biz it's it's food that everybody needs to eat they realize everybody needs to eat yes. and they cannot sit and i look at them and i respect them yeah. because you can't just sit there and expect everything to work mm -hmm. you have to look for ways in mm -hmm. which you can survive mm -hmm. within this time mm -hmm. so i've seen people uh, th there's a lady who posted that she bought tomatoes from a mercedes benz mm -hmm. she bought I don't know what mm. onions, I don't know, yeah. from a, a BMW, you true. get it. Mm. So times are really changing and we are getting to a point of being humbled that we appreciate everything around us. Every business that is around us, we appreciate. You can imagine right now, there are so many people who don't have jobs. Misha, do you know that? Did you ever think that you are providing essential services? <laughs> <laughs> right now I do. <laughs> <laughs> right now I you do. Actually, you are actually providing essentials. You are right like a now doctor. I do. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and a nurse. And, uh -huh. and you know, like those the people who are called essential services. Exactly. You are one of them. Now, I, I, you know, I told you when these things started. You and the mamas from Ushago I said are all, you are now essential services. <laughs> yes, we So are. you are very right. It has really humbled us. It has just caused us to really rethink who we thought was essential mm -hmm. services. Exactly. And who we thought were not essential. Because... Salons are not essential services. They're not. Now we know. Mm -hmm. And a good we know diet. that. <laughs> the minister has been talking about a good diet, healthy exercise, you know, I mean, fitness. I know. I wanted to bring that <laughs> up. Uh, I know you are, you, are, you are very physically fit. Yes. And that you take physical fitness very seriously. In mm -hmm. these times of COVID, mm -hmm. has that become a very important thing to you now? Yes, it is. I wake up very early in the morning and you see me jogging in the compound because mm -hmm. now I'm scared to go on the roads mm -hmm. and running with a mask. So I'm in the compound. Within the confines of the compound, it's safer for me, but I'm still exercising. I'm keeping myself active. And why? I've always embraced fitness as a lifestyle, not necessarily because of COVID, but I've always known that it, it, it has always given me that balance yeah. in terms of mentally, physically. I'm able to think soundly. I'm able to rest well. I'm able to enjoy my day after I have had a good workout before I start my work mm -hmm. or even in the middle of my day mm -hmm. if I just spent my 45 minutes mm -hmm. to work out. And besides that, the food that I make holds also have got a healthy beat from it that now I complement together with mm -hmm. my fitness. You've noticed, I don't know, right now everybody is posting videos. Yes. Yes, everybody has something to say. They are also trying to run. They are also trying to exercise from home. They are following through videos on uh, online mm. to do some workout. And uh, to me, we are now rediscovering ourselves that the things that are more important in life mm. than the things that we always thought were, that's the position where we are in. Yeah. I think mentally as well, I, I like what you talked about mentally. Mm. Have you found that mentally you 
do you, I don't know, I don't know about you, but do you feel anxious? Do you feel doubt? Do you feel fear? Initially, as, I a, as a business person, do you feel confused? Do you feel, do you wonder whether you'll make it? I don't know. Initially, I was. And um, at some point, I was sleeping very late. My sleeping patterns changed. Mm -hmm. Because you know very well when you wake up in the morning, there's nowhere to go. Mm -hmm. you, are st you will have to stay in the confines of your house. Uh, there's, your movement is limited. Access to a lot of things are limited. And then even if you have to go to those places, th you have got to observe a lot of rules that have been set. And so you feel like you're so limited. I mean, now what next? You get it. Mm -hmm. So, and then there's that worry now, what will happen? You know, the fear of the unknown. But at some point, I reached some point and I say to myself, listen, the moment of healing, the point of healing is accepting that we are in this mm -hmm. and it's here to stay. Mm -hmm. The moment I accepted that, mm -hmm. things changed. So you came from denial to yeah, acceptance. acceptance. Accept you yes. came from denial, you grieved. Yes. Then you came to the point where you accepted. Yes. You went through the the, uh -huh. the the experience of from denial to acceptance. Exactly. Okay. At some point, I even had to get sleeping pills because I was like, "Hey, this is not going to put me down." Because why am I sleeping at one, two a.m. in the morning? Okay. And I have to be up early because initially I used to sleep by eight thirty, nine, latest ten. But now I I found myself like one, two mm. in the morning. Mm. Then why am I awake? I won't even give you an excuse. Mm. Why? And you notice online now, everybody is online. Like, you remember the post I was telling, I posted about 3 a.m., 3.30 a.m.? Like no, I'm there's, still a, there's a time we had, a, well, you had this thing. What is it? Facebook. Um, and, and there was like 40 of us at 2 a.m. I think uh, a lot of people. that tells you. <laughs> a lot of people online. I got a lot of reactions, like over 60 something. And I'm like, come on. And you could still see that uh, I'm very sure there are those who didn't react, but they were still online. Yeah. People are online at that time. So yeah. why? Then so what do we do during the day? We are very tired people, mentally, physically. We are exhausted. We are not resting well. We are yeah. exhausted. And that is why now there's uh, people are very unsettled. We yeah. want to go back to our normal lives. Yeah. The numbers are shooting up. Yeah. The numbers are shooting I up. I think the joke is that there's actually no normal life. True. Unfortunately for mm -hmm. us, yeah, true. There I isn't. think there will be no after COVID. Uh, COVID will change everything. It will definitely, yeah, yeah. definitely. We want to go into a break and mm -hmm. then come back. Okay. We'll be joined by someone else. Okay. So we're going into a break. Dadas, grab grab something. We'll be right back. Thank you. Welcome back, Dadas. We're talking about women in business and COVID-19 times. How are women's, um, women run businesses get being affected by COVID-19? We have just talked with Mishi and had a really good discussion. And she has shared her experiences with Haki Enyeji's business. I want to welcome Cecilia. Um, Cecilia is a businesswoman, runs a, a, a women in business, Christian women in business network and uh, is a core, I think a core owner of another business with her husband. So she's a woman in business. Cecilia, please introduce yourself. Thank you, Pauline. Thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here. My name is Cecilia Wanjiru Gishia. I'm a Christian entrepreneur in the event industry. And together with my husband, we also run a company called Eden Destiny Ventures, where we provide comfortable traveling solutions to the society. Cecilia, yeah. travel has been hit. Nobody's going nowhere. Events have collapsed. How are you coping? You should not be smiling. <laughs> I know it's a great challenge. Of course, I'm in the event industry and for me it's social events, mm. the baby showers, the wedding, and of course they're all at a stop. Yeah. Nobody's traveling. So my bus is in the house, packed. That was the situation in March, and I, uh, it really got a stall on me. Yeah. But pre-COVID, I always have a kitchen garden where I had pottery for family consumption, and also I grew vegetables. So when COVID hit and the reality hit that I'm staying at home, 
So after passing through that phase of Okay, the, the, the denial, the grief, the I five know. stages of grief. Because it is seriously the five stages of grief that, like Mishi was saying. I had Mishi. You had village. denial. Then what are the five stages? You are also a counselor, so tell us. <laughs> Let me not go for the five stages, but <laughs> one of it, for the first time ever in my life, I watched a movie, was a series. I'm not a series person. You had time. 3 a.m. Then it's when it rocked. No, 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 something is wrong somewhere. That's not me. I don't do series. I just, I can do one movie and mm. I'm out. Mm. Then I realized something, is, something needs to come back. I need to come back to life. Yeah. Yeah. So I looked at the back. People are at home. So people are afraid to go to the supermarket. I, am, I live in a neighborhood where we have, we have people. My fallback plan was the cook. The cuckoo. Cuckoos. The, 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 the hobby. The yes, hobby that the you hobby. had. Yeah. So I increased the, my production of eggs and now concentrated on layers. Okay. Yeah, a few kienyeji, because the challenge with kienyeji eggs, it needs somebody who, who consumes it faster mm. or a big family because mm. it tends to spoil faster. Mm. But layers would take a longer time. So I increased my production. So I started supplying eggs around and people would come to the gate some uh we would um, i would use my gardener to go around with a bicycle that's what we have been using till today so if i'm visiting pauline in her neighborhood my eggs come with me so cecilia how are the chickens doing how would you say the chicken the, chi the cuckoo business has been pelecaring you currently mm. i believe food is top F the food industry is top because everybody's in the house, the kids are in the house, so everybody is eating, and nobody is stopping eating. So I, I would say I, I see there is a lot of there is an increase in mm -hmm. demand. Mm -hmm. You find um, uh, you expect a client to come for a crate maybe after two weeks, after one week they say the kids have eaten all the eggs, so that is the situation. Okay. So for for me, I believe it's a plus. Of course, I would also conquer with what Mish had said earlier, the feeds. For us now, the feeds for the cuckoo, the price is high. And all of a sudden, in fact, in this, this is May, I don't know where eggs have come from. April, there were no eggs. They are everywhere. Yes. Mm. I don't know suddenly mm. where, eggs are, where eggs have come from. Uh, the people that I was, uh, was selling wholesale at 300, they're now telling me, no, 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 people are taking at 280 to 70, and I'm mm. asking them. But the, the price of the, of the feeds is, is still high. Mm. So I don't know where they, I'm yet to understand where the eggs are coming from, but still, it, it's not blocking anything. Mm. Because if I'm, re I'm delivering it to your door, mm. you wouldn't mind paying what I had requested. Because either way, you go to the supermarket, the price is still mm. high, it's mm. around 400. Mm. So we're still in business. And for the vegetables, I, I don't go around selling the vegetable. People come to me because they get ready from the shamba. So I have a, my, my usual guy who has been doing my gardening. He's the one now who plucks for them. They stand there, they pluck, yeah, for whatever amount they want. I, I think I'll ask this question to Mishi first. Mishi, do you think that women are just faster than, I don't want to say men, but do women, <laughs> Are women able to bounce very quickly back? Yes, we are. We are fast thinkers. I think, uh, I think for many people, and I don't want to talk about our other gender, we never, we never crush our other gender on this show, mm -hmm. but I, I find women have a way in which, like, like, like Cecilia said, you just wake up one day and you realize, okay, I have to come out of this depression. Exactly. I don't know what has been your experience. I think women are very strong in terms of uh, coping with the stress, and we embrace every opportunity like he hands on. We we really don't care. We have to find. We are solution providers. Mm. We are solution providers because, uh, and, and I can't say. I mean, that is just a great strength mm -hmm. that God gave us, and that is why they always say that a woman is a helper. <laughs> It's a woman true. is the neck that gives direction yeah. on where the head will face. Yeah. You get it. So it's just our unique, uh, th those are our unique attributes that God gave us. Mm. Yes. 
I just, I just listening to Cecilia, I just sense such strength. Mm. You have a business that has collapsed overnight. You cry for two days, and then you pick yourself up and start thinking, what can I do? Mm -hmm. That's, it's such a good story. Yeah. Uh, have you had similar stories in your network? What are women up to now? Yeah, I do. Uh, I'll get, um, let me say, two, two, two examples. First, I think women, we, we, we connect easily. We connect easily, mm. rather than the other gender. Mm. We connect even with God easily. And that's why you find churches, women are so many packed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I believe that's where we draw our strength from. We draw our strength even from crying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in my network, we have a group, or we have a WhatsApp group where we've been encouraging each other. We have been praying for each other and asking questions, selling to, get, uh, selling mm -hmm. to each other. Mm -hmm. So I have one lady who is an interior design. Interior design at the moment, yeah. Who is there decorating their house? We are, sa we are just keeping every shilling we have yeah. for food mm -hmm. because we don't know when the country will ever reopen. Mm -hmm. I know. Nobody is even eager to create a, 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 a something on a space mm -hmm. or an empty space. Nobody. So what she, her fallback plan has been cereals. Still, food. We go back to food. Yeah, we go back mm -hmm. to food. Yes. And if, in fact, cereals is the, it's like the cheapest protein. Yeah. yeah. Jahez, mm -hmm. beans. Cheese. You know, bees, yeah. those things, yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's what her, she's doing. Another lady, she went also into eggs business, but for her, she gets, uh, she gets rent from a wholesaler mm. at 250. Mm. Don't know what that means. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But be, previously, she was in real estate. But who is buying a plot right Nobody. now? Nobody. Mm. Nobody. Nobody. So basically, majority have gone to the food business. Another one, vegetables. Has she supplies from to she goes to Marquiti mm -hmm. and then supplies it to the estate in the mm -hmm. estate, mm -hmm. yeah, basically. Okay, that is what people have been doing. You just have to find something to do. Yeah, yeah. Especially as a woman, you might crash. I Remember, know. the kids are at home. Yes, mm -hmm. and they are eating. They're eating. Mm -hmm. We can't stop that fact that they're eating mm -hmm. because they are growing mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, nothing. Everything else might stop, but growth will not stop. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Do you have any tips, ladies, for women who are in business who are probably sitting at home? They had a really good business, as you said. They went to the office. Some, some women, you know, have lost their jobs. Eh? That's they, right. They woke up in the morning mm -hmm. and they were managers. They had, mm -hmm. they had big cars. They were living mm -hmm. the good life. Mm -hmm. And then overnight, you are, you are told you have been retrenched. Or what is it? What are they being told now? You've been laid off. Yeah. Until yeah. Or you're on half a salary or, or something salary, of that kind. Mm. What are some of the tips for survival for, for ladies? Me, what I always say, and I, I, I say this boldly because I've been in that space where uh, my life is really on top there. Working as a manager in a big five-star hotel and life reduces you to zero where you lose everything, you have nothing to fall back to, and so you have to pick yourself up. First of all, women need to stop this thing of we have got uh, majority of us have got this identity crisis mm -hmm. where we want to identify with a specific clique we want to be seen by society like we are doing well we are in this kind of status it doesn't help we need to get to a point whereby you know what don't refuse to get dirty mm. do not refuse to get dirty mm. I, I always wear two faces. You see me in my other face, you will not believe it's me. But when I dress up and I get out, you would think, oh, come on, this mm -hmm. lady, mm -hmm. you know? So, and, and I've, I came to a point whereby I realized, you know, uh, trying to, when you suffer from identity crisis, the, the society will not pay for you your bills. Mm -hmm. They'll not take care yeah, of you. Yeah, when you think that if you, if you, if you are seen by certain people yes. on the road with your car, do you know there are okay. times, <laughs> let me tell you a good, interesting story. Mm. I've done all manner of businesses. There's a time I used to sell fish on the roadside. The ones of Nini, of Vidakarai? Uh, yes. I used to fry fish in the evening. Like very early in the morning, go get my fish, bring it home, le wash it, leave it drying, go to work, come back in the evening and fry the fish. Mm. And every time I could dress up people, kids could start laughing on the roadside. Mm. Mama, samaki, amengara. <laughs> <laughs> So, as women, you, you have to think very fast, mm -hmm. you know. 
you're very good at this or very good at that even whatever you're not good at you see like what she's saying yeah. like she chose to use her home garden mm. to plant more vegetables mm. to start supplying eggs mm. you know and there she is and there are lots of ideas i always say there are a lot of ideas mm. there are lots of business ideas it's just that we don't think out of the box something you can do that can I, i'm looking forward to the day i'll hear someone has just set up a laundry place where people bring clothes and they are washed for the iron even if it is just manual washing you know that kind of thing i know that would be really cool you you're doing something yeah. for yourself yeah. you know and and there's no shame in doing mm. that there, there's no shame in doing whatever you're doing personally i do it with a lot of so much zeal so much grace and i'm very happy about it mm. there are people who know me from the different quarters those whom i used to be their boss and they look at me now they start wondering what happened this is a woman who was driving big cars now she is back but there's a reason why i'm there mm. because where i'm going is greater and i have to embrace this down so that i can pull myself to get to that greater mm. because if i wanted to go and get a job as a manager as a what i'll always get it yeah i'll always live that life again but there's a reason why i chose to come down get dirty get to learn the trade yeah. get to understand you know the intricacies of this to get myself to where i want to be so during this covid what i can say is majority of people was so much used to what they were doing and mm. it was bringing them money mm. to be very honest mm. so you can imagine that change that sudden change it can really put you in a very bad place in fact like it psychologically it can shake you up yes, completely yes exactly you look at yourself in the mirror and you wonder who is this that I've become exactly. I'm a, i am now a mamamboga exactly i've seen so many people who've turned out to become mamambogas and to me it's not a bad thing it's a very good thing and i like it because now we are getting to understand yeah this is what works this is what we need to always be prepared anything can happen mm. so if anything happens am mm. i in that place where by i can still be able to take care of myself and my family because when the children are there they don't care whether there's covid they expect to eat it's interesting that money is money cecilia yeah money is money, money. from food money yes. from a nice fancy office all exactly. of it is money yeah it money does not have a uh, does not have a uh, white collar or blue collar it's really really money so at the end of the day it doesn't i like what you said mishi mm -hmm. let's stop glorifying white collar jobs mm -hmm. exactly we we over glorify mm -hmm. looking good driving nice cars yeah. but you know that at the end of the day one day you can wake up and mm -hmm. lose your fancy job exactly and maybe perhaps it's better to have root mm -hmm. build something for yourself mm -hmm. that will outlive even yourself exactly. so I, i like what you're saying mm -hmm. cecilia any thoughts i believe it's, it's important always to have a backup plan mm -hmm. whether you are in employment or not because mm -hmm. when you're in employment there is that sense of um, comfortability there is a salary you know however it goes there is a salary at the end of the month and, and somebody mm -hmm. else is responsible for you for you yes and uh, you can take a loan easily you can get a mortgage and you're mm. like i know i will sustain it but today currently asking yourself if you have a mortgage what are you doing if mm. the salary just come to a stop so it is important as women to always have a backup plan mm. a backup plan is important then also be flexible mm. be flexible true there is no arriving don't arrive mm. <laughs> don't get into employment and arrive where are you arriving mm -hmm. you are in 30s you are in 40 where are you arriving you still have kids you have yourself to take care of yourself where are we arriving so that point of arriving is when when covid knocked some people maybe they're still collapsed till to date mm. mm -hmm. they don't know what to do somebody at this hour still with pajamas and they are sleeping yeah yes i know they are depressed actually many people are depressed yes, true. it is true I've, i've i've actually come to realize that a lot of people are suffering from what we call depression yes. yeah. yeah yeah so how you should be flexible and be able to adapt yeah we have adapted we we, we are especially people who are uh what will i say business owners yes. we are used to go out out is where money is mm -hmm. but today we are here lockdown curfew how are we adapting and where is it? we have adapted so every every human being can adapt themselves mm. so adapt and change easily there are many opportunities opportunities come disguised in overalls mm -hmm. so while you are waiting for 
uh, a man in suit or a lady in suit, hey, no. Right now, there are people who don't want the queues. The salary is still coming in. They don't want to go to the supermarket and queue. They yeah, they are very health conscious. Yes, they, they don't, don't want, want to die. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> why don't you become a personal shopper? Mm -hmm. I will shop for you, pay me, and bring. What do you need? Your list? Yeah. Yes, pay. Then I deliver. Some people do uh, the, the way Mishi was saying laundry. Then, mm -hmm. why don't you get their clothes, take them to the laundry? You do the errands, mm -hmm. and you still make your cut. Mm -hmm. Why do uh, there are many things in the U in the YouTube and on Facebook? Baker's Club, mm. then make snacks, parents will buy. There are people who will not go to the kitchen, no matter how we talk here today, but they will buy. So get snacks. Ideas are all over. Look, the way Misha said, ideas are all over. Opportunities are, are Opportunities all over. They are everywhere. Are mm. Everywhere. Mm. Misha, lessons learned <laughs> from COVID <laughs> that you will take into post-COVID. What, what would you say? What are some of the lessons you've learned? Um, the lessons I've learned, like, basically, the greatest lesson is to be prepared in case of any did eventuality. You have, okay. D did you have lots of savings? I won't ask you. I was told we are supposed to have six months, but six months are six months. Do you feel you had, you had cushioned yourself? Properly? No, I don't think I I had cushioned myself properly because I was actually getting to a point. Remember in the last show we had talked yeah. like I wanted to get to a location. Yeah. And then uh, instead of getting to that location, what I did, I invested in uh, more storage for mm. my food. So I, I can say even if I took all that there, it has worked very well for me mm. because I needed that storage. Mm. I realized I really needed that storage. I needed to expand my storage because in case I expand my capacity for production, mm. I need a place where I can store my mm. food. Mm. So th that is what I did. And the uh, greatest lesson right now is we need to be prepared mm. for any eventuality. Because right now, like personally, um, I'm trying to now network with farmers from around yeah, yeah. Nairobi, not mm. far way back from uh, uh, Mashambani. Because mm. it's much easier. Mm. Somebody who is in Thika can easily plant for you vegetables and they supply you. You know, it's easier that way. So we have got to be always prepared mm. in case of any eventuality because this actually caught us flat-footed. Flat -footed. We didn't expect this, mm. the magnitude. And to be very honest, how I look at it, it might not sound very good, but we haven't reached the climax, unfortunately. Looking at how the numbers are rising, we haven't yet reached the climax. So by the time we reach there, where will we be? Yeah. So we have to keep our minds alert and think through what next, what are we going to do? Because whatever we may be doing also, like, like there's a time, I'll give you a very good example, like there's a time there was a rumor that was going around that the area where I live is going to have a lockdown. Mm. I didn't sleep the whole night mm. because I was like, now if we have a lockdown here, mm. it means mm. I'm not able to reach my customers. Mm. So what happens? Be prepared. Yeah. Yeah, be prepared. Mm -hmm. Cecilia, lessons learned. Did you, I, and I ask everybody, did you have a cushion? Six months? I'm told you're supposed to have a six months cushion. No. <laughs> I will honestly say no. Uh, because our first pre COVID, 2019, for me personally. It, it was a learning experience. Let me say it was a bad. No, it was a learning experience. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I was very hopeful for 2020. You, you were the people of 2020 is my year. I mm -hmm. was. And still am. <laughs> still am, despite <laughs> COVID. Still am. So I, didn't, I can't say I was pushing. I, was, I j had just geared myself and I said, mm -hmm. this year? No. What else can I do? I was there. So I wouldn't say... Actually, it came as a sh it was like it was a shock. It yeah. was a shock mm -hmm. for me. Yeah. It it was like a dream <laughs> before we came to reality. Yeah, yeah it was a dream, and uh, because of these things of uh, issue of mental and whatever, I would mm -hmm. say you just have to mm -hmm. to draw strength from God. Whatever you believe in that is supreme, mm -hmm. you have to draw strength. For me, I draw strength from God. That is number one. And I believe that has been a pillar. And also, because I needed that also to help the women who are in the network, you know, talking to them. Mm. 
then number two support system is important mm. you must have a tribe mm. Mm. amen sister you must have a tribe you must have a tribe mm -hmm. because the people who will survive in this the people who are belong to a tribe mm. because right now people are running uh, the talks mm. if you don't have a tribe which talk will you get into you still get in but still yeah. you feel yeah you feel alone yeah, alone mm. so support system is important mm. you realize now we have the family so mm. if you are not coping up with the family that's why we are hearing some people saying some marriages are bad some families are fighting people are killing and each other in, mm. at, at home because mm. uh, they had no the, the home the structure was not there covid mm -hmm. and so does family is important covid and so does you must have a cocoon it mm -hmm. is important even the even though we are uh, we are physical distancing but we are still we are we are meeting socially because of the, if of the support system if you didn't have a support system which social site will you be mm -hmm. yeah so support system is important and a good support system mm -hmm. that i should mention mm -hmm. because of course there are some which are not prudent mm -hmm. they're not prudent. so support system is important then number two number three my parting shot would be have a backup plan i wouldn't have yeah. a backup plan plan b plan, plan c b. Mm. it's important the same way somebody said if uh, if a is not working there's still 26 other alphabetic yeah so if you stick to a and a and a me have my job i do well i'm mm. it won't work out now so mm. you must always have a a backup plan or a fallback plan mm -hmm. whether is it finances even support system, it's a fallback plan mm. that when I'm not able to stand on my own, mm. I know I can lean on somebody. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Those are your three. You yeah, even give us three. your parting shot. Yeah. <laughs> Mishi, do you have a parting shot? <laughs> and I think f for me, as I, as I ask you about your parting shot, my thought to you would be, how important is money and careers to women and businesses to women as you, as you think about parting and COVID-19? Mm. You know, we always say, there's always this saying that money is not everything. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Has that been proved right or wrong by COVID? Of course it has. It has, because it has been proved right like by COVID what that I, money is not everything. Money is not it? everything. Like, you know, you cannot buy life with money. Yes. And uh, we have got to, as human beings, to be in that space where we value things that are more important. Just as she has said, Celia said that, you know, um, family mm -hmm. fallback plan. I, I mean, a support system. Mm -hmm. You must have a, a tribe. tribe. You get it. So um, I think those are the key important things in life. And uh, being able to be that kind of person who adds value to other people's mm -hmm. lives, yeah. you know, not just because of uh, money, you know, mm. because I, I've seen... This COVID has uh, reached, it, it reached a point where I was like, even the politicians are very quiet. Yeah. You know? Everybody. <laughs> hmm? They're very quiet. It, I, I think this COVID has hit us. And then this, uh, I, I look at this COVID as in, uh, it, ha it, it has made us to respect each and every person around us, mm. treat each other well. Like, uh, I'll give a good example. Like there's a time I took, uh, I sent a rider to a d for a delivery. And uh, this customer was making noise that this rider, I don't want to touch the bag. Mm. I don't want to touch. I don't know what. And I told her, listen, we have to be our brother's keepers mm. right now. Because uh, this person you're thinking, you're rejecting, you don't want to touch this, mm. touch that. Another person that you felt is actually more important than this one mm. could actually be one, the one who infects mm. you. You get it. Mm -hmm. So we have to treat each other well. And uh, we have to be responsible for each other. If I am with Pauline, I need to care about Pauline. Mm. Is she safe? Is mm. she this? Because uh, um, I don't know if you've noticed, like uh, now we have, uh, personally, I take it upon myself like to try and call like five people. Are you mm. okay? Mm. Are you safe? Mm. Is everything fine with you? You know, just to get to find out how they are doing. So COVID has taught us a lot of things like uh, valuing things that are more important. Mm than money. We are always busy chasing money, mm. running everywhere, but COVID has silenced us. It has put us at that point of humility mm. where we have to start rethinking, okay, so this wasn't so important. Even if I have so much of it, it won't take me that far. Mm. So 
Yeah, that's my parting shot. <sighs> Ladies, dadas, as always, um, thank you very much for watching our show. I think COVID has taught us a lot of things, but as women in business, I cannot echo um, what the guests have said. Have a plan B, have a plan C. But as we think forward, let's remember that money cannot buy life. And that we all need our families, we all need our tribe, and we have to learn to take care of ourselves and take care of each other. So until next week, women in business, dadas who are running businesses, be safe. I keep saying, wash your hands, um, watch where you're going. If you don't need to go anywhere, stay at home and take care of yourself, take care of your family. Baraka. <laughs>